Patrick, if I can go for, first of all, you know, you're a professor, you've worked in politics in the States, you've been in private equity, so you've got a really good broad range of ideas on the Chinese economy. Where are we right now for 2012? The year of the dragon, soft landing, hard landing, or are we going to be okay? Well, there's certainly a correction going on. You know, I was uh, listening uh, uh, earlier to the numbers that you were talking about uh, concerning the real estate market. I mean, the real estate market seems to be uh, in free fall, at least in certain cities in China, uh, and lowering asset prices. I mean, for the past uh, couple of years, you've had this positive cycle where higher asset prices lead to more lending, which leads to higher asset prices and onwards and upwards. And now you have uh, a negative spiral where uh, lower asset prices, particularly in real estate, are undermining the basis for both past and, and future lending. And uh, that's really what's been driving uh, the Chinese economy. And as we enter uh, the new year, the, the key question is whether uh, there will be a continuation of this investment boom that has been driving the Chinese economy forward. My suspicion is that it won't continue and that we'll have uh, a harder landing than a lot of people expected sooner than expected. So does that therefore mean tax cuts as opposed to rate cuts? What's the best form of uh, stimulation, do you think, right now? Well, what, uh, what's happening right now is uh, uh, there, there are a lot of voices calling for monetary easing. But the PBOC, China's central bank, is concerned that uh, inflation rates are still relatively high. Even though we saw them drop, uh, there hasn't been a single month this year in which inflation hasn't been above uh, the government's target of 4%. And so the PBOC is reluctant to ease. And there's a big question about, especially given the state of, the, of construction right now in China, whether easing will necessarily lead to more investment and more growth. So the focus has now started to shift towards using fiscal policy. My suspicion, though, is that the Chinese will find that they're going to be in the same situation that the Jap Japanese found themselves in the 1990s, where all the they turned to fiscal stimulus too late, and all of that fiscal spending ends up going into filling holes that were created by the, by the collapse of the monetary stimulus. And overall, therefore, your biggest concern for China, many are saying clearly the property bubble, the credit bubble again. I mean, are these really going to come together as almost the perfect storm? Well, there's usually a delay uh, between the fall of underlying asset prices when a bubble bursts, whether it's in America or in Europe, and the impact on the financial instruments uh, that, uh, that reflect that value. And so uh, right now, one of the things that we're seeing is pouring old wine into new bottles, uh, repackaging debt in China that probably should be considered as bad debt, uh, loans that have been made to local government infrastructure projects that aren't generating any uh, cash flow. And, and presumably we're going to be repaid through land sales, but now that prospect is starting to disappear. Uh, instead of recognizing those as bad loans, uh, banks in China have been authorized to issue new bonds, presumably to private wealth management vehicles in China, the proceeds of which will be used to pay back those loans. So the old wine gets poured into new bottles, the, the due date gets kicked down the road a few years, but fundamentally the picture hasn't changed. Uh, you still have an asset that really is impaired and is ultimately going to reflect in a, result in a loss. Thank you for joining us, Patrick Shervin at the uh, Chinquia University Associate Professor.